Welcome to part two of my Lion Energy Safari UT test videos. Uh, if you missed the first one, there's a link in the description. Um, in that one, I did some discharge tests. In this one, I'm going to do some charging tests. And also, I'm going to compare uh, charging and discharging between one of the Lions and two of my golf cart batteries, just to see how they compare in discharge under heavy load and also how fast they can recharge. So let's get to it. Next test, now that the battery is totally depleted, let's see how long it takes my IntelliPower charge converter to charge this battery up. This would be simulating me having no solar and just running my uh, generator into the IntelliPower. So it's putting in about 56.5 amps. I've got the IntelliPower in boost mode, so it's going to put in a be a consistent uh, voltage. Let's we'll throw a stopwatch in there and we'll see how long it takes it to charge. Okay, so it's finished charging. The battery management system inside the battery has shut down the current coming in, so it's fully charged. And our time was 1 hour 39 minutes 30 seconds. So I was pretty well it was consistently charging around 52 amps the whole way. It didn't didn't uh, go down in value to right when it cut off. So that's pretty cool. Unlike a lead acid, which slowly drops, especially the last 15 percent. So um, that's just charging one battery. If I was to charge my whole bank at that charge rate of of only 50 amps, I would I would take. Uh, you know four or five hours but of course with three batteries I could put a lot more current in if I wanted to it's sort of giving you a baseline because most uh, RVs have a have about a 50 50 amp charger in them and most generators if they're a 2000 watt they can power uh, a converter that can put out about 50 50 amps or so so I'm happy with that, much faster than, than a lead acid battery, that's for sure. Next I'm going to do a little comparison test. So I've rehooked up my two golf cart batteries here. Uh, they have a total amp hour rating of 232 amp hours. Um, usually you can only run them down 50% and they're a little aged so they should really have a capacity of about 100 amp hours. Um, kind of comparable to one of the, the Lions. So I'm going to do a, uh, a current uh, drain test and I'm going to draw the 80 amps out of them. So I'm drawing 83 amps there. Um, just to compare how many, how many amp hours they will have because a lead acid under load when you're drawing a lot of amperage out of them they don't have near the, the their rated capacity anymore. Um, you can also see that we're down to 11.5 volts. So when you have lead acids and you're drawing a lot out of them, the voltage sags quite a bit. So an interesting comparison. One of the benefits of lithium is that the, the voltage stays pretty well the same till the very end of their, uh, their capacity, whereas the lead acids sag quite a bit. And I'm thinking uh, they won't have near the, the amp hour capacities when they're they're running with a with a large uh, load on them. So it should be an interesting test. So I'll just let that go um, until the voltage gets so low that the, the inverter starts to to want to cut out. And I'll call them exhausted. And then maybe we'll come back and do a recharge test. See how long it takes to to recharge them back to full again just sort of as a comparison between the two. And I'm using the same load, this little heater set for a 900 watt mode. Okay, just checking on it, we're at 27 amp hours. Check on the voltage, it's starting to drop. We're down to 11.3 now. Amperage is up to 86. I don't know how much longer it's going to go. Now, my inverter is starting to complain. Low voltage. So we'll call it quits. 
go check the amp hours. Okay, 28.6. So you can see at a 900 watt load, 80 amps, a little over 80 amps coming out. And instead of getting, um, you know, the rated uh, amp hours, you can tell they're rated at a lot lower current drain on those batteries. Now those batteries are three or so years old, so they're going to be much worse than a fresh set. But that's quite a, a substantial difference versus the lithium where I got 87.5 amp hours out of, out of uh, that same load. So you can see now that I turned the inverter off, the voltage has popped back up. So these batteries still could could supply some energy, but just at a lower rate. They they just are at the point they can't supply like 80 amps. So that kind of shows you that the the lithium have a, have quite the benefit when you're drawing heavy loads off them compared to the less a, lead acid type batteries. So I'm going to continue um, running these down. I'm going to get them down to the point where they're they're down dead flat. Um, by just running a, a lighter load on them and then we'll we'll, we'll uh, test how long it takes to charge these two up from flat to full just to compare with the lithium batteries which I think they took an hour and a half or so an hour and 40 minutes okay I'm at the point where I'll call these run down the resting voltage is 11.9 that would be about the point you'd really want to start recharging your batteries um, also, if I put any type of load on them, just let me turn on this uh, heat gun here and put a little bit of load. You can see the voltage drops right away. My uh, inverter starts complaining. So it came out to around 62 amp hours I got out of the, the pair before they were down to the point of needing to be recharged. Now I put a, quite a heavy load on them at first. Um, the way lead acid works, if you draw a small amount of current, you'll get, you'll get probably the full capacity. Um, so you should be able to get maybe out of these, you get 100 to 120 amp hours of usage. But when you start drawing heavy loads, there's a an effect to them that that they actually reduce their capacity quite a bit and you know it at, at um, 80 amps um, they don't have near the capacity so because I, I I did a situation where I drew a heavy load and then I drew maybe a, a moderate load and finally finished it up with a low load I only got 60 amp hours out of these um, the lithiums aren't affected as dramatically like that in, so far in my experience the the lions were affected somewhat but not nearly dramatically as a lead acid is so overall lithiums are much better for drawing heavy loads off of you still retain your your full battery capacity so next let's go and see how long it takes to recharge these I'll put a timer on them and I'll just use the same IntelliPower charge converter that I used to charge up the the Hunter the the Lion 90 amp hour batteries Okay, so it's starting out with a nice 55 amp charge current going in. Checking in after about 45 minutes of charging, and you can see our amperage has dropped down to 27.3. Whereas with the lithium, it was a solid 50, 52 amps, and that's just the characteristic of lead acid. As they, when they're very depleted, they'll accept a lot of current, but as they charge up the internal resistance of the batteries increases and they can't accept as much as much charge current anymore. So we'll continue on. So it's going to be slower and slower as we go. One thing I can do at this point is I can I can go into manual mode and force the charger to override its natural charging algorithm for lead acid and I see I'm bumped it up to 42 <clears throat> which isn't quite as high as the 52 but my only risk is I could be charging them too fast and the the inside the liquid will start to boil um, and it could start to overflow you have to really watch when you use something like that so I'll just turn that off because most people wouldn't mess around with that when charging lead acid okay we'll continue on 
Had about two and a half hours now and we're getting close to uh, getting back to fully charged but we're not there yet. You see the current has dropped dramatically. We're only putting in 7.8 amps now. And this is what happens. That last 10% uh, of charge takes quite a while. But with lead acids, you want to bring them back to 100% charged. Um, hopefully every time, but at least every few times, you want to get back to that 100% state of charge. Because if you don't, um, over time the plates will sulfate, sulfate and then you're, you reduce the lifespan of your batteries. That's one problem with lead acids versus lithium. Lithium don't care if they're being 100% charged. In fact, they're better if you, uh, from what I've read, it's better if you don't bring them back to 100% charge all the time. Maybe leave them down or 80-85%. Just you can you can stay in a range with them, which is which is great for boondocking because that's one thing we're always fighting is getting these lead acid batteries to get back to 100%. You know, if you get a cloudy day, you're not getting much solar. It's hard to do with the generator. You don't want to run the generator for hours on end. So it's going to be great with the lithium as far as that. That's one, one pro for them for sure. So we're getting close to three hours now. We're down to 4.4 amps. So we're getting really close to, to finishing these up. I'll just call it a test. So right around three hour recharge time compared to about an hour and 40 minutes or so for the the lion energy 90 amp hour battery so uh, you can see that uh, lithium is of a great benefit if you're running you know large inverters where you're going to be drawing a lot of uh, amps to run appliances and things like that also you're going to be able to, to recharge them much faster when you're boondocking so that's one of the benefits i just wanted to to prove it to myself with a, with a couple quick tests with the, my old golf cart batteries here Okay, final test I'm going to do is see how long it takes my particular uh, boondocking system to charge up one of these batteries. So I have plugged in my IntelliPower charge converter. So that's simulating me firing my generator and running that thing full out. And then added to it is also my solar system. And it's a, a fairly blue sky day. not totally there's a tiny bit of haze getting a little cloud coming and going um, but I'm usually getting up near set anywhere from you see it at 68 I've seen as high as up to 80 amps of charge going into this one um, one of these lions is rated to charge at a hundred amps and so if I had my bank all together I could actually charge up to 300 amps at a time massive current so uh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, I thought I'd do this test just to see. I've hit, I've set a timer, and I'll just let the the solar go, and we'll see how long it takes to charge this one battery. Give me an indication of what I'm going to be looking at versus a lead acid battery that would start charging quite quickly and then slowly drop down in amperage. There's my solar power. Um, if I'm pointed just right, I can usually get that up close to 30 amps on a sunny day. But I'm kind of in this RV park. I'm not pointed ideally, but sort of shows 23.6 amps coming from solar. Let's go down here for a total of 72.9 when combined with the, the battery charger. Hey, a little update here after about 45 minutes. Solar's increased a bit as the sun's gotten a bit higher. And we're up to 14 volts. 71.6 amps. Let's check how many amp hours we have left to go. There's 30 amp hours to put back. Okay, we've hit an hour and 10 minutes and we're getting pretty close. Current is starting to drop off. Voltage is coming up. Pretty soon the BMS is going to shut down as fully charged. Okay, so the battery management system inside the battery sh shut the, the current off now that it's fully charged. Uh, we're looking at 1 hour 15 minutes. Let's see the voltage 
So an hour and 15 minutes for my uh, system to fully charge one of these. Um, if in my three battery bank, you could times that by three. So I'd be looking at three hours and 45 minutes to bring my bank from fully depleted back up to uh, 270 amp hours, which is pretty cool. Um, there's no way I'd, I'd be able to do that with the old lead acids. They would take probably pretty well all day because it takes a long time to get that last 15%. So I'm really happy with that. And I'm not even charging anywhere close to what these things can do. So as I add, if I want to add more solar or a bigger charger, I could do it even faster. But I just wanted to give you an indication, you know, real world example of uh, them charging with, with my uh, RV uh, boondocking system. There you go guys, I hope you found those tests useful. Um, I'm going to use these batteries a couple more weeks here and uh, do some more kind of uh, testing myself and see how they perform. And then I'll come back with the, the full review on the, the Lion Energy Safari UT battery. So stay tuned for that. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Cheers, everyone.